Hey, 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 how's everyone doing? It looks like we got about eight concurrent viewers, whatever that means. Uh, thanks again. Uh, if you're in here just joining us, please. Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on real quick, guys. It looks like Fox is joining. Hold on. Oh, I can't do uh, Fox. I can't do video. Hold on, Fox. I already have my camera on OBS. Fox is really, really late, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give Fox a, a bunch of applause for uh, not being here on time. You never texted. Oh, you should have just been here. <laughs> so that's the Fox's lovely voice. Good morning, Fox. How are you doing? How's the weather in Canada? Uh, sunny. Hey, well, hey, take Sunny, man. Take Sunny. All right. So, hey, we got Fox here with us, guys. So, uh, we're going to be just doing, um, well, I'm just going to, like, basically rift and talk. Um, and uh, as Fox had talked about a couple days ago, if you guys want to throw some questions in chat, we can definitely do that and, uh, um, and answer those questions there. We're going to go for just about an hour. Today's the day where uh, I got to get to the shop and um, I only, I, I, well, for those of you that, okay, let's, let's, let, let me back up. Let, let's, let's start Fox jo joining <laughs> when I just saw him uh, calling me. I was just like, okay, so through my, my chain of thought here. Okay. So, Hey, first of all, everyone, uh, for those of you that are here, please like, uh, throw a hello in chat. So I know you're here. I can acknowledge you. I always love acknowledging people that are here. So like Tordai's here. Geeks here, Supas here, uh, questions and answers here, and uh, geek. Well, I already said geek, so say hello. So throw me a hello so I can say, say hello to you. Acknowledge that you're here. Uh, we're gonna go for about an hour today, and the reason why is uh, on Saturdays uh, I usually, well, not usually, I go to my shop. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I own a gaming store where we specialize in. All trading card games, Warhammer, Age of Sigmire, Conquest, and then we do a crap load of board games. Um, we host tournaments and all that type of stuff. So I try to go there every Saturday as I don't go during the week because I'm busy at work during the week. And if I do go during the week, it's usually in the late evening time. I like to get there in the morning to kind of like clean up, get some stuff, see how it's going. So uh, yeah, there you go. So we're going to be doing that. However, uh, Fox reminded me that we're going to be doing a cool stream with Only Cops on April 20th. So 420, if anyone has the significance in that, uh, we'll be doing a little 420 action. We won't be doing 420. We'll be talking about probably 420, but um, there you go. Let's see here. Let's add, we have a couple of things here. Hello, Imaginary Constructs. Super good morning. Good morning to you, sir. Um, I'm doing well. The weather has finally cleared up here, and that's why I was asking Fox like what his weather was in uh, Canada. Uh, it's cold, though. I mean, we got snow on the mountains just outside of my house. We have snow at our slopes, which is about 45 minutes away from my house. Now, maybe about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour um, in Big Bear um, and uh, Arrowhead. But, um, yeah, so uh, I'm actually waiting for summer. I want summer to come. I'm done with the rain. I'm done with the cold. So there you go. Uh, let's see, question, can you please play Mafia Definitive Edition, classic game that got remade? I think that's on our list. Fox and I are talking about the different games that we possibly could start playing in the near future, so that is a strong possibility. Um, questions, answer says, love Mafia, and you should look up the get the Getaway. Isn't it the Getaway, the two-player game where you have to play with somebody? Uh, and I, I think I, I think, oh my gosh, I got dog hair or something on me. My dogs. That's the only bad thing about that. Oh no, it's, it's, oh my, it's my shirt. Um, I know I was talking to Jordan, my daughter, and we were talking about playing that game where both of you have to play so she could live stream it. She wants to get into live streaming. Um, so we're, I'm going to help her to do that and, uh, hopefully her and I will be able to do some co-op together. So that would be kind of cool. Not only father daughter, but two police officers doing some cool stuff together. Uh, will we finish the last of us? Yes, we will finish the last of us. I will, I'm not going to do it live. I'm going to just record episodes and get through it as I have never 
played The Last of Us, and the only Last of Us that I've ever played is what you guys have seen on his channel. So I definitely want to get back to that because, you know, obviously I watched the uh, the uh, television series, but I just want to play the game because obviously the game has, you know, so much, so much more in it. So yes, we will. Uh, Avatar Thanos. Love your videos, Chris. Can you... Also, can you ask the creators of Ready or Not to add a Five Nights at Freddy's level? I don't know if they'll quite do that. The Ready or Not guys, uh, I think they got some work cut out for them to try to get that game polished. Uh, if Fox had a choice, he would rather play SWAT 4 than Ready or Not. Isn't that right, Fox? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, man, Fox loves SWAT 4, uh, and I appreciate that. He loves SWAT 4. Uh, and I got to admit, like, we just added the PvP co op to the to our, our regiment, and it was a lot of fun. Especially when you get some good guys who we kind of, like, team up on each other or, you know, we uh, we start bagging on each other and, and have a good time. So Yuki ends up usually being our, uh, our <laughs> red-headed stepchild. <laughs> So, uh, it is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. Uh, how's work? Uh, work, so, works work. Works work. You know, the, the higher you go, you know, the less police work you do. Um, however, I ha however, what was cool was the other day I was uh, leaving for lunch with my staff. And um, as I'm starting to turn, make the, the, the turn onto the street, I see this guy in a hoodie with uh, what looked like he was wearing gloves hop a brick wall to someone's backyard. And then I'm kind of like, I stopped my car in the middle of the street, put my lights on. And my car that I have, um, the lights are subdued. So they're like on the inside of the car. So you can't really see them from the outside. You have to either be directly behind the vehicle or in front of the vehicle. And uh, he, uh, he doesn't see me. So I'm, I wrote him my window and I'm watching him. And then I'm like, so he finally makes contact with me. And I'm like, hey. What the hell are you doing over there? And he's like, oh, and I, and I can kind of hear him kind of say something. Uh, wait, hold on. So Tordai saying Fox is too loud. And I don't understand how Fox would be too loud. Let's see here. I'll lower chat. And I'm too low, but my mic is maxed out. How's that, guys? Is that better? Maybe putting the mic in front of my face? I'm getting I'm getting red bars on my on my uh, on my levels, so that would be like, uh, you know, that's what I'm going by. So, anyways, I start yelling at him, and then eventually I tell him to get the hell on the other side of the fence. Um, I probably used uh, you know a couple of profanities here and there because he wasn't getting it, and so he hops the wall and he comes over to my car, and I'm like, and I'm in plain clothes, I'm in my suit, and I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm just getting my stuff. And I'm like, what do you mean you're just getting your stuff? If you're getting your stuff, why are you hopping walls? Well, you know, my ex-wife, you know, she won't let me get my stuff. I'm just trying to get my stuff back. I'm like, oh, your ex-wife. So, oh, and he started to tell me he lived there. And I'm like, or he lives there. And I'm like, BS, obviously, because you're hopping the wall. So, long story short, he's about to walk away. Or he actually, as he walks away, he turns around and says, oh, shit, there's my ex-wife. And at that point in time, I know, like, okay, something's truly up. Well, one of my guys had seen me in the middle of the street pulls up and says, hey, what's going on? And I'm like, do you need anything? I go, yeah, let's pet check that guy. Make two, make a long story long. Uh, my guy's going to pursuit of him. He ends up crashing during the pursuit. T-bones a vehicle in the intersection. Luckily, that person was okay, and they arrest him. And we come to find that uh, his ex-wife has a restraining order against him. He is a uh, he has a bunch of other uh, you know a bunch of other things going on, so it was literally yeah it was just like I always tell people you just don't know what your day is going to be like a police officer you know like, you know where I have this guy you know hopping a fence in front of me I confront him um, those are things that a chief of police really doesn't do a, a, a chief would just drive down the street and call his guys but I've never really been that way I don't like you know uh, doing that to me it's just like I'm still a cop I have a gun and a badge. And um, I am capable of, you know, stopping people as well. Uh, so, all right. So, like I said, but those that's fun times. That's fun stuff. All right, let's see here. Don't forget to like the stream, everybody. We got 15 likes. I'm definitely loving it right now. That's like way more likes than we had the other day when we were playing um, The Walking Dead. 
uh, would like seeing you interview Officer Tatum. Uh, I think he's like really above that now. He's you know, I, well, first of all, he's only was only a cop for a couple of you know, like but a minute. Um, his his claim to fame was talking crap about Colin Kaepernick. So, uh, but hey, good for him. Good for him, man. If you could get that famous like that, uh, and so forth. But I don't know. Once again, I mean, this channel is a very what do we call it? it is a very it's a it's a it's a it's a small channel. Uh, we, you know, though I would love to get over a hundred K followers, uh, you know, what? it's funny is cause I, I mean, maybe when I get a hundred K, I want a million, but I just want a hundred K. I just want a hundred K. That's it. My goal is to get a hundred K this year. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get that, uh, as a channel, in my opinion. And I, and I said this in the video that I just did. Um, I feel like the channel is like dying. Like, and that's because of me. It's not because of you guys. It's because of me. It's the lack of quality content that I have not been putting out. So I got to really get back into this. And, uh, you know, it was like it was like this morning. It's real easy for me just to get a hold of Fox and say, yeah, you know, we're going to cancel Coffee with the Cop. And I got to stop doing shit like that, especially if there is no reason to cancel. I mean, there, one thing is if I have to work or, you know, I'm going to go do something with my wife. That, you know, that that always that should obviously will be, you know, work is work and, you know, and spending time with my wife is, you know, important as she lives in um, San Jose, California, which is 400 something miles away from me. And when she comes on the home on the weekends, you know, I, I do got to, you know, take that into consideration. So but I got to do stuff. I got to do some new stuff. I got I got a ton of stuff that I got to get done. Um, and uh, we can start doing some other videos that are non gaming related, such as talking about pulp culture that I'm really into. And uh, so you guys get kind of a more inside view of what you know, I'm all about and what I like and and so forth. And once again, the reason why this channel had all started was to show people that police officers were regular people. And we started this channel in the midst of turmoil in the United States regarding a couple of incidents, George Floyd being the most recent at that time. And yes, I got a lot of hate. However, we we survived all that, and we are here today. So um, that's, the, that's the part. So I, I just love the fact that all of you are here, and you really get to interact with the police officer because really think about that. How many people get to really interact with the police officer the way you guys get to interact? I mean, you know, I'm out here in Southern California in the Los Angeles region. So, you know, one of the most one of the, uh, you know, the most well known metropolitan areas in the world. And you guys have an opportunity to interact and ask questions and so forth like that. So, uh, yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, what did you do today? Tordai, I have done absolutely nothing today. I woke up, I fed my dogs, uh, had one cup of coffee. I'm right now sorting bulk Magic the Gathering trading cards all the way from 4th edition and unlimited all the way to recent stuff. I mean, I have probably about 30,000, 40,000 cards on my pool table right now that I'm sifting through, trying to put them in their actual um, series. So I'm um, doing that, but I'm going to head down to the shop later on this morning. So actually, as soon as I get done here, I'm going to change and head on over to the shop. There's a, quite a few things that I got to take care of. We got some stock in that doesn't have any invoices, so I got to look for those invoices because we got to get the stuff on the shelves because stuff not on the shelves means it's not selling, which means we are not making any money, and we definitely got to do that. Um, it's supposed to be pointed at my mouth like this? No. Is, mm. Hello, hello, hello. I, I don't know if it has to be totally pointed at your mouth. So you got you got to be able to see the RGB, right? All right. I know it, it is pretty quiet. Is it really? Yeah. Hello. Let's take a look. Let me take a look at my my settings. Okay, so I maxed out on settings. Yeah, maybe I just have to talk louder. There's some, yeah, you know what? There is some, uh, there's some presets, I guess, that I could fix in the future. 
I'm going to up my gain. See if that helps. See, so I, according to my my uh, levels here, I'm right about to peak out. So maybe it's just me. Okay. All right. Let's keep answering some questions, and we'll definitely talk right into the mic. That might help things. Um, let's see here. What's your time? Well, right now it is 9.20 in the morning. Um, all right. By the way, so this is from Avatar. By the way, Chris, there are two body cam style FPS games called Deppert Prototype and Fractured Mind, which I would recommend for you to check out. Okay. Uh, weather, it is cold, but it's finally clear. And I'll take that right now. I want hot, but that's not going to happen. Uh, Nifo, how's it going, Nifo? How you doing there? Oh, you know, let me go back here. Questions answered has arrived. Cole has arrived. And hey, Cole, gas is fun in the PvP, right, Cole? Yeah, Cole's got to play with us in PvP, so uh, it, it, that is a lot of fun. All right, let's see here. Uh, we talked about weather. Nifo, what do you think of the UK officers where they only have tasers? Would you like that to implement in the US? Hell no. So, when the United States of America was becoming a country and the westward expansion was happening, the time to get rid of guns was back then. But if you really think about what was happening in America at that time, okay, we're, we're talking about the from the Pilgrim days all the way to when towns were finally being established in the 1800s. There was lawlessness. So people had to have guns we were a very new country if you think about it we're still a new country uk is thousands of years old and with that westward expansion that was you know there was the lawlessness we can get into the whole debate about the native americans here and their their uh, you know their role in you know in this you know, I, I, you know, not to, you know, I, I mean, I wasn't there. However, you know, our westward expansion took away their land, and at a, at a, you know, at their, and they had a right to defend themselves and their land. So, but that caused people to be armed. So, the time for us to get have gotten rid of guns would have been back then in the 1800s, and we didn't. So. And guns, and I, actually, I, I just read that right now. Uh, Shadow Wolf says guns is the is like a part of the American identity. It is gun ownership, which is codified in our Constitution, Second Amendment, is part of America's identity, and it's too late. The government could ban all guns, and we will still have millions of guns. It's just that it's gone. There's no, there is. No, I mean, there's gun control, kind of, but there's there's just no way we can go and we we can't put that genie back in the bottle, as they say. So, uh, and given the fact of we have the southern border with the cartels, hell no, we need to be armed, and so do law-abiding citizens. All right, reverse Lee, how's it going? Reverse, uh, do you miss the SWAT team? Uh, yes, yes, I do, M very much so, very much so. Um, so, but remember, uh, I, my last six months at my previous police department, I had been removed off the SWAT team or it might've been even a year, uh, due to some, due to a bad chief trying to retaliate against me. So he removed me from the SWAT team. Um, in fact, uh, you guys will get more of that story as time goes on. But let me just tell this community here. I was removed because I did the right thing for the right reasons. And I think all of you would be proud of me. I know my daughter's proud of me. but And the officers who know exactly what happened are proud of me. But when people talk about police need to, uh, you know, uh, report bad cops, I did that and I was punished. So... All right, Shadow Wolf, yo, what's up? Questions answered. I think you can get 1K if you talk about what you saw back in the 80s, 90s in LA, and that's what people want to watch, you know, true crime. You know what, questions? I agree with you. I agree with you. I definitely got to get into more stories. As a matter of fact, the thumbnail that I stole today from myself 
is cop talk. And I was going to talk about life on the beat and I was going to try to do some episodes and I never just got around to it. So yes, I definitely got to uh, get back into that or not even get back into it. Start that, uh, that, uh, that playlist. Uh, all right. I think, uh, let me see. Ne Nifi, like your story times and such. I agree. Clickbait thumbnails were cool stories. We're, yeah, I, I, yeah. <laughs> I like clickbait. I know. I'm not a big fan of clickbait, but I get it. I get it. Hey, what's going on, Strix? Will you be playing with the Astros revamped AI mod? The AI mods are hiding under the bed with a knife and running across the room and just more dynamic in general. I haven't seen that, so I'll have to take a look at that. Saber Gaming, one of my trusted moderators. Hola, what's going on, man? Um, let's see here. For example, Compton, California was the most dangerous city in the U.S. once upon a time. It was a dangerous city. However, when I was a paramedic in 1996, the city I was working in as a paramedic was considered the murder capital of the United States. And that was when we had five members of one family executed by... The Mexican Mafia. I was there. I pronounced all five people dead. Well, actually, I pronounced three dead. And the other paramedic crew worked up the eight-year-old girl. And I worked up the six-month-old baby that had been shot execution style in the head. So, um, But I was an EMT during the 90s and stationed in South Central Los Angeles. And it was a knife and gun club up there, out there. And we were... Every weekend, we were at the King Drew Trauma Center taking, you know, gunshots, stabbing victims there. So, yeah, it was actually, for experience-wise, it was a freaking awesome time. It was an awesome time. Um, let's see. Nifo, I mean, think about it. You're a cop for many years. You have thousands of stories. That is the perfect content. People love stories. Maybe make a playlist where you go from your early days and progress. I, I could do that, Nico Nifo, but the problem is, is that when I start thinking about one story— it reminds me of another story, but these it's sequentially it doesn't work. So I think I just got to go with stories, and it's not even just cop stories; it's paramedic stories, like the one I was just talking about right now. I was a paramedic, and if you guys, there's a video um, from Gangland that I was on. Fox Undercover interviewed me. Um, Sixty Minutes interviewed me. So I was on those shows talking about this uh, hit that was uh, sanctioned by the Mexican mafia. Well, actually, not totally sanctioned by the Mexican Mafia. They were supposed to kill one person, but unfortunately, the guys were high on dope, and they ended up killing an entire family. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Ever considered to play The Wolf Among Us? Yes, uh, I am thinking about it. So we are going to be trying out different games. We'll see what kind of analytics we get from the playlist, and we'll go from there. So, yes, we will definitely be taking a look at that. Uh, yes, the Pinkertons. Pinkertons played a major role in the expansion of the United States. They're still around. Um, not as nefarious as they used to be. At least I hope they're not. Um, Nathan, what's going on, man? John Pride. Hey, how do you think what would be the perfect actor for U.S. Marshal Base Reeves? Will Smith or... Well, that, there's already, there's already a, a series out there. Did you know that, John? I, I haven't watched it, but I know that there is a, a series there. Will Smith or Idris? I don't know. Neither one look like him. Hmm. I don't know. You know what? Honestly, oh, I'll be honest about that, John. I would love to see a new actor. New actors. That's That's one of the things that I don't like is when they put these actors in movies where... I, I, I want nobodies. I want nobodies because I attach, and I think we all do, certain actors as, you know, that they're, that they're role. For a prime example, like in Star Wars Han Solo, we get Woody Harrison. I don't want Woody Harrison, Harrison, whatever, in Star Wars. I want a new actor. I, I don't want to see people that I've seen in movies dozens of times. I wanted to see people like I can go, get into that character, like Han Solo, that character, that kid who played him. I can get into that because he's. I haven't seen him in anything else, so it. That's where sometimes you know you you got to look for new talent. But Hollywood's not going to do that because Hollywood wants to make money. Hollywood wants to attach big names to stuff, and they real and it to break into Hollywood. Obviously, we know is one of the hardest things to do. 
But it's just like, like you know, like Star Wars, you know, the, the last chapter, you know, we got uh, what's in Ray, a nobody. That's cool. I want a nobody. I don't want to see, <coughs> excuse me, I don't want to see somebody I know play that role. I want to see somebody totally different. All right. Um, yeah. Hey, uh, Nifo, thank you for the super chat. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in chat and you have not liked, please like. We like to go, we like to do this in increments of 25. So if we can get 25 likes, that would be much appreciated. We have 23 concurrent viewers and 21 likes. So I want to definitely thank you for all of those thumbs up. All right, Strix, you got really dark. We don't even have bad cop mechanism in Ready or Not. You got really dark. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But it's a true story. It's really a true story. Uh, we don't even have bad cop mechanism in Ready or Not. You know, what, what do you mean? What do you mean, Strix? What, what, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Uh, Tord, I thank you very much for loving the stream. I definitely do appreciate it. Uh, Fox Commander, yes, I was undercover and interviewed Chris. <laughs> All right, questions answered. You need to get a person who interviewed you like Reggie Wright does on Bomb One. That's a thought. That's a thought. There, are, I, th I think there are a few people. The problem would be the studio type of setting. I would have to really rearrange this room to do something like that. I guess I could set it up at my gaming store after we close or before we open. That's also a possibility. So, yeah, you know what? That might be a possibility. I'm kind of thinking about my private room at the gaming store where people rent it to play Dungeons and Dragons. That might be a good room to to do that in. And I know there's a guy named Mike Lopez who is uh, big into social media. He go, he actually shops at my store. He could probably be the one to ask me the questions off off camera and then do that. So that might be a good strong possibility. So hey, th th thanks for that um, questions. That's actually a really good idea. Nifo, have you ever been in a situation where you thought that you are in a real danger and that you had more chances to die than... Oh, Nifo. I couldn't even begin to count how many times I wondered if I was going to go home. Um, and that's for every police officer. When And I'm going to give you a prime example. When you are doing a traffic stop in the middle of the night, and it well a traffic stop period, but I, I just want to paint this scenario. Okay, middle of the night. You know we all know that humans were not built to see at night. Hence the reason why we bunk. You know we we uh, you know at night we're supposed to bunk down and let the animals have uh, reign of the land. You are using your lights, but still it's still dark. And as you get out of your car. That distance that you're walking from your car door to their car door and before you contact them in that no man's land, the danger zone, in the back of your mind as a police officer, you're, you know this could be it. You know you could be in a, a fight for your life physically with the firearm and that is true to to the whole entire time that you are on duty. I want to do a study, as I, as, as I don't know how many people know this, but I'm a few short months away from earning my PhD, and I did a study on police traffic collisions, and it's currently being reviewed, and once it's reviewed and, re and uh, it's signed off on, I will, what they call, defend my thesis, and then I'll be awarded my PhD if everything koshers. But I wanted to do a study on the psychology of being a police officer because from the time and, – and that was a really great question. From the time you walk out of your house, you already are in hyper mode, and you drive to work. You're watching in your mirrors to make sure no one's following you. When you get to work, before you get out of your vehicle – at least I do, I would pull my gun out, put it at my side, cover it. I wasn't going to let anyone get the drop on me as I walked from my car into the station. You go into the station, and you get ready for work. And think about this. As a police officer, think about the the the, the mind, like, uh, what's the best way I could describe it? The, what's going through the mind of a police officer as they're getting ready for work you're putting on a piece of body armor to protect you from getting shot. 
Then you put on your gun belt, and then you put your gun in your holster. I mean, who – name me an occupation where you're getting ready to do battle. You're getting ready to defend yourself. You're getting ready to help others, knowing in the back of your mind that this could be your last day on earth. And being hyper vigilant, the entire shift, which we worked 12 and a half hour shifts, and then you get off duty, you take all that junk off, but rinse, repeat, take your gun out, walk to your car, look around, get in your car, drive home, clean yourself, which I mean is that you 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 do, you know, you do these weird driving techniques to see if anyone is following you. And if you're a smart cop, you take a different route home to ensure that someone's not following you. And then you park your car, you look around, and then you beeline it to the front door of your house and get inside your house and lock the door. And then you're safe again. That is every day for a police officer. At a certain amount of time, or after a certain amount of time, what does that do to you mentally and physically? So that was a great question. Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see. Christy, the actors of The Rookie are kind of new, right? No, they're not. They're all established. Well, some of the other officers are. But then again, I don't know because I won't watch The Rookie. I can't stand The Rookie. I think The Rookie is trash. They had such an opportunity to do something with a cop show, and they made it into uh, a soap opera. So that's just a cop soap opera. So I, I, I will never give The Rookie any any of my time. Hey, Katie. I hate the rookie. The rookie is awful. <laughs> awful. <laughs> Thanks, Fox. Caden, if someone has insomnia due to head trauma, would they have a much lower chance of becoming a police officer than someone who has who has congenital? I uh, it would that's all doctor stuff. They're you know so um an, oh, or anosmia. Anosmia? You'd have to explain that. Uh hey. Let's please like. We got 25 likes. Thank you very much for everyone that's here liking. We have 21 people. That's actually kind of cool. We've had we haven't had over 20 people in a coffee with the cop. Um, let's see here. Uh, questions. What's your thought on former monsters becoming YouTubers all of a sudden and call everyone rats? <laughs> Gameology, the YouTube channel. I've seen a couple of their episodes where they have the the uh, the assassin, the the mobster. I don't know, man. I you know it's it's kind of funny. It's it, it you know what the world is what the world is. So if they they can make a, an honest living from being a YouTuber, then good for them. I guess it's better than them being a mobster, right? Let's see here. Strix, a bad cop mechanism is ready or not could be like a trader mechanism, a who's done it, a ready or not is really good at what it does. So I doubt it needs to expand. Yeah, it doesn't need to. We don't need to add that. We just want a tactical game from ready or not. We just want ready or not to be ready. We need them to add a bunch of components and to make it the fun game that we're all looking for. Don't get me wrong. I like ready or not, but after about three or four runs, it's just ready or not. It's just another tactical game. So there would be great... If there was more of um, a tight story mode, I should say, a very tight story mode, that would be that would be pretty good. Hey, what's up there, Boom Donut nine nine nine? How's it going, man? Nifo, speak for yourself. I I live in a built built night vision. <laughs> okay. Uh, would you? Ooh, oh my God, you should do an interview with Soft White under Balor, no jumper. Um, I have no idea that who that is. So after the stream, I will definitely have to take a look. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, be right back. I got to take a quick little uh, break. So I will be right. Uh, give me about two minutes. Poggers.
All right, sorry about that, guys. I had to go check on something real quick. All right, so let's go back here. Uh, let me see. John, I've seen David Oliloa in new TV series, Not Bad at All, but didn't impress me. I like to see his story on the big screen along with 310 Yuma with Russell Crowe or Unforgiven with Eastwood. Um, i just tired of movies being remade, to be honest with you. It's like, stop remaking movies. There are some great movies that just need to not be touched. It's like, it would be like remaking a John Hughes movie. You cannot remake his movies and then be any good. They were timeless. They were, they were for that time period. You can't do The Breakfast Club again. It What? You guys got cell phones these days, so Breakfast Club would not exist. The Breakfast Club was about, you know, a bunch of teenagers locked in a library doing detention, left to their own devices. So you can't do that again. It's, it's just, it's just, it's, it's like Hollywood, can Hollywood get an original idea? I would love an original idea. And there are so many, here's the sad part, ladies and gentlemen. There are so many talented writers out there. I'm going to give you a prime example. I have a, if I would say, a really good friend. I consider her a friend. But uh, her name is Leah. Uh, it's McKendrick. She just finished writing, producing, and directing Scramble. Um, I had a part in it. It was cut. But that's okay because I still made the credits. It's still on my IMDb. And it was, I watched it. And I was like, this is a good movie. And I see that she announced that she's going to be writing um, a remake of I Know What You Did Last Summer. I'm a little like, uh, again, we got to – but maybe she'll add some flair to it. But she's, she's, she's talented. She's very talented. And the stories that she – like the, the story scrambled is just like it was just a bizarre story of something that is exists – that a lot of women are going through, and so she she did a great job. So it's like Hollywood. You need to really look at the scripts of these inspiring writers. I mean, that's you know that's really what it's all about. You can get some new stuff that we would love to watch. So, anyways, there's my soapbox. Um, let's see here. Have we played any PvP and ready or not? Eh, kind of, kind of. But SWAT 4 has a mod that allows us to actually have teams and we could change teams and all that type of stuff. So SWAT 4 modders are still doing it right. Avatar, hey Chris, when you play Five Nights at Freddy, were you able to eventually catch the suspect William Afton, also known as Purple Guy? Plus, would you take the night shift at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria? Uh, I have not completed it to catch the bad guy, and yes, I would take the job as long as I'm able to have my guns. Uh, good guy finished last, Chris. I remember a time when the neighborhood knows the local cop. Oh, that's go. those times are long gone. Never going to happen ever again. Um, have you ever been jumped before on duty or off duty? Have you ever been jumped before? What do you mean, boom? Like 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 attacked? Uh, and if I if I've ever been attacked, yes, I've been attacked several times on and off duty. So, uh, I mean, not off duty, on duty. I've been attacked definitely on duty. Uh, so yes, if that was your question, that is the answer. Yes, uh, rise and thrive. How's it going? How you doing, man? How you doing, Caden? Not having the ability to smell if someone weren't born. Uh, I don't. I can't recall there being any requirement that you have to be able to smell. So you should be able to be a police officer. Shadow Wolf, I'm curious, how do promotions work in the police force? Uh, well, Shadow, you have to get some knee pads, and you have to get on your knees, and I'm just, well, as much as I'd like to say I'm joking, unfortunately, I'm not joking. There are people who get promoted that don't deserve to get promoted, but because they kiss the ass of the people who are doing the promotions, and these people who are doing the promotions love the power and love to have their ass kiss, uh, they think that's loyalty. And what they don't realize, it's not loyalty. I've I have friends right now who are talking shit shit about their leaders but they support their leaders to their face but they talk shit to me about their leaders that's not loyalty so they're willing to set aside some scruples to get an extra stripe an extra bar or get a bar or get an extra bar uh but talk shit about the person who's going to give it that to them so I would rather have and, – and here's the thing. 
I don't want someone to be loyal to me. As a chief of police, I don't want you to be loyal to me. I want you to be loyal to the oath of office that you took. Because chiefs come and go. I want you to be loyal to your community. Loyal to the oath that you took. That's what I want you to be loyal to. Not me. I'm just a person. Um, Nifo, can't imagine how mentally thing is to go to work. What just, just well, that explains why people think cops are just like, shoot if you like, but you're mentally in hyper mode for at least half your day. We are. But even at home, we don't relax. We try to relax, but we don't relax. And what I mean by that is, um, I sleep with a gun underneath my pillow. I mean, who, I mean, I know other Americans do that, but I do it because I know the darkness of this world. So that's why I do it. Guys, he needs to do an interview with Soft White and Valley. I know for the fact that that's going to hit. I got to look that person up now. I don't know who that is. Um, fitness topic. Hey, how's it going? What are the thoughts on CCW insurance? I've never heard of CCW insurance. <laughs> so that just in case you, you're CCW and you shoot and kill someone that you're covered, uh, it makes sense if that's what it is. Um, let's see here. Carol Fawn fan. Carol fan. Hey, what's your favorite TV shows or movies? Well, Carol, I'm going to throw this back at you. Corral, whatever it may be. What genre? Because I like just about every, I like movies in every genre. I have favorites. Like if I have Western, for me, would be the original Magnificent Seven, followed by Once Upon a Time in Mexico for Westerns. Sci-fi, man, sci-fi is kind of hard. Star Wars is up there for me, but believe it or not, man, I love Flash Gordon, The Flash. Man, it's like one of my all-time favorite movies. You got um, Sword and a Sorcerer. Oh, my gosh. TV shows, Battlestar, original Battlestar Galactica, even the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. <sighs> Emergency, Quincy. I'm probably putting things out there. People are like, what the fuck is he talking about? But, yeah. Hey, man, you know what? I got to say, I had a pretty rich childhood we had some cool shows that were just not politically correct so uh yes total i agree with you remakes reboots suck i'm tired of movies that are being remade me too have you seen dune 2 no i have not so I, I i just before dune went off of streaming i just watched the first dune i mean not the that not the original dune movie but um the dune to this one and uh man it was i i i really enjoyed it so i definitely got to get to see dune too hey random user 99 98 how's it going i heard you mention a thesis are you studying for a doctoral in criminal justice no in public administration i think a degree in criminal justice is completely worthless i have a couple of professors who are ex-cops and have doctorates do you plan on becoming a professor i already am a professor i'm an adjunct professor at uh, two community colleges and one university um, it's Spurious Dude. Hi, Chris. What is it like switching careers between law enforcement, firefighting, and EMT? Wasn't the transition taxing? I never transitioned. I did all three jobs at the same time. I just left the fire service in 2020. I think that's when I left the fire service. So I was, I, I've been doing all, all of them all at one time. So I've never had to transition. Um, and quite honestly, it was a freaking hell of a ride, man. I love it. I love the fact that I get to sit here in front of all of you and tell you that I was an EMT, I was a paramedic, firefighter, and police officer. I mean, how many people get to do what I got to do? So I had a very, or I still do, have a very rewarding career. So... Uh, why do so many cops now escalate everything instead of de-escalate things? That's okay. So I'm hoping chat won't get too crazy right now. Cause I, I definitely want to talk about that. LG gaming. What do you mean? Because that's, I, I, I don't want to, I, I'm, I'm not being rude, but that's a BS statement because right now there are probably 
well, not probably, I don't know the number, but there are close to 1 million police officers in the United States today. Not on duty, but today. From coast to coast, there are police officers right now doing their job flawlessly. And those are the stories we don't hear about. The only stories we hear about are the ones that are caught on camera and uploaded to social media. There are no stories that show, I mean, there are very few stories that show police officers doing the right thing for the right reasons. So we de-escalate daily, daily and do it right. But there, if things escalate, nine times out of ten, and this is just my opinion, it's because the person escalates it to the point that we have to escalate it more. Remember, police officers cannot lose. We are not here to lose. If we lose, that means that the public loses. So here it is. When the cops tell you to stop what you're doing, put your hands on top of your head, or whatever that may be, just flip and listen. There is a procedure that if you don't agree with what's happening to you, after it's all said and done, you can lodge that complaint. Every police department in the United States has a complaint process. Now, are they all, are they, are they all perfect? And Hell no, they're not. But at least you can try. And then we have the DOJ, the Attorney General's Office, the FBI, that can even investigate things even further. So this arguing with cops and fighting with cops, we only react to what is placed in front of us. But yes, there are bad cops. I will acknowledge that. There are assholes. There are people who don't deserve to wear a badge. And I hope that we can discover those people and fire them before they do any damage to the public trust. So... All right, Strix, what is going to happen to California? It's like outdoor living, and it has been the perfect climate, so I'm always worried about California. California is going to collapse on itself if we don't get control of our crime. People are moving out. I'm contemplating moving out. The crime here is incredible, and it's endorsed by our politicians. So I I don't know what the... the, the future of California holds for, for law-abiding citizens. Boom Donuts 99 jumped is as an ambush, like walking around a corner and being whacked on the head. Uh, no, that's never happened to me, but I have contacted suspects who all of a sudden just decided that they wanted to attack me. But yeah, no, I've never been ambushed like that. Caden, do you think booby traps should be legal if anyone who is invited into the home is made aware of? I'm not thoroughly convinced booby traps are not legal. You can do whatever you want inside your house, house, especially with the castle doctrine in the United States. So, I don't know. That's a good question. I mean, can you can you make a tiger pit in your backyard? I don't see why not. Questions. A- questions answered. What is your opinion of other states calling your state California? <laughs> they got it right. Uh, <laughs> California is not the state it used to be. Uh, LG Gaming, the remakes are to get new generations. Gen- no, but no, 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 no. So I, I get it, LG Gaming. Screw the new generation. Show them the old shit. The old shit's better. It's like Roadhouse. My daughter watched the original Roadhouse for the first time, and she was like, oh, my God, that was epic. Sam Elliott was epic. That's what you do. You don't need a remake to introduce anybody to an older movie. Just let's 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 remarket the older movie, right? They put older movies back into theaters before. Let's remarket that for a new generation. Let's let's let people see Patrick Swayze in the Roadhouse. You know, Patrick Swayze in uh, in uh, what is the one of my favorite movies? Believe it or not, Dirty Dancing. <laughs> I can't believe I said that online, <laughs> but it just is. All right. Uh, let's see. Random user 98. Would you agree that there is a form of warrior culture with various police departments, a culture that promotes militarism and aggression and leads to viewing the public as the enemy? No. However, 
I think, let me see. I don't know if I can find it. I, I, I don't know if I can find it right off the bat. I'm going to try to look real quick, guys. I don't want to take too much time on this, but I, I have a response to when people say the warrior mo mode and the guardian mode, and I'm trying to see if I could find it. Um, I have since done some research on what I'm looking for right now to find out where it truly came from because where I thought it came from was not true. But I, in being my due diligence, started to see if I could find where it uh, or this phrase originated from. I'm looking, I'm looking. I have it set in my favorites, but unfortunately I have like 1,000 photos in my favorites, so I'm just looking for the actual picture. I do apologize, guys. I do apologize, so please bear with me. But that is a very good question, and I want to show you what I mean by the difference between... Okay, here it is. All right. So I've been asked as a chief about warrior and guardian about what I want my officers to be. I want my officers to be warriors. But here's the thing. What definition of warrior are we using when we say warrior and guardian? Like, come on. So you don't just get to say, oh, you know, we don't want officers to be warriors. Well, what freaking definition are you using? So at one time, because it's a picture of Sitting Bull, I thought it was Sitting Bull who said this, but it, he didn't say it. It actually came from somebody else, um, from somebody in South America. But I want you to—I want you to read this. I want you to hear this. Warriors are not what you think of as warriors. The warrior is not someone who fights, because no one has the right to take another life. The warrior for us is one who sacrifices himself for the good of others. His task is to take care of the elderly, the defenseless those who cannot provide for themselves, and above all, the children, the future of humanity. That's what I want right there. I actually bought the book where this came from because I'm tired of the wokeness of, oh, the militarization of the police and oh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, they're an occupying force and blah, 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 blah. That's why... Crime is out of control because we're listening to these woke people tell us what they think the police should be doing. The police are there to stop bad people from doing bad things to good people. That is it. That is what they do. That is what they should be doing. It's just that simple. Should bad people fear the police? Absolutely, they should fear the police. Should good people fear the police? No, they should not fear the police because they're not doing anything wrong. Go back to your parents. Did you fear your parents? You only feared your parents when you did something wrong. I had to catch back up to chat. Let me jump off that soapbox now. Strix, what are your thoughts on the reboot of the reimagined Battlestar Galactica? Yes, there is one in the works. I can't wait, to be honest with you. I'm a big Battlestar Galactica person. Big. Uh, Armor 3 and Armor Reforger. Armor 3 is older. It came out in 2020. Has a huge modern community. Armor Reforger is newer. The original June is better than the new one. I like the older show. Remakes suck. <laughs> I, re I agree with you. John, I don't agree. Sometimes it's good to refresh old stories. I know the guy who says no need to replace the original. It needs to add something new to this. Um, good example, Scarface with Al Pacino. I don't think you can redo that one. I, I, and I don't think you should redo that one. Or like redo The Godfather, Apocalypse Now. I just don't think you could do that. Hey, what's up there? It's Spurious Dude. What's What do you mean, dang dude? Uh, did, I get too, did, I, did I get too soapboxy? Uh, any plans for 2024? Yeah, grow this damn channel to 100,000 followers. Uh, LG Gaming, you can see thousands of videos on YouTube. and you're, but Thousands? Okay, well, there's almost a million police officers. Um, and you'd be surprised on what cops don't know regarding the law. I don't know why there is this, we are experts on the law. We're not experts on the law. That's the funny part. You should see the learning domain of how much constitutional law a police officer gets in the academy. Hence, that's one of the follies with training. We need to train our police officers better in constitutional law and then teach them more to teach them 
better about the penal code and the vehicle code. Now, me, personally, I took it upon myself to read the legal source book, to read about case laws and so forth. And so I never had a problem. I knew exactly and still do know exactly what we can and cannot do. You know, the 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 Fourth and Fourteenth Amendment are huge. The Eighth Amendment, you know, are huge in our in our profession. You got to know what you can and cannot do. But yes, there are thousands of videos. Yes, I understand that. But there's also a million police officers. So what's the percentage of, first of all, just a truly bad cop, as opposed to a cop who needs more training? And this is not the fault of the police officers. This is the fault of the training that they go through. Maybe we need to require every police officer to have a four-year degree in criminal justice, or at least a two-year degree. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Will you continue Red Dead? I will. I will, actually. For me, I got to finish that story, but I will upload it. All right. Uh, LG Gaming, it's not easy to get rid of bad cops. You guys are going to hear my personal story of me trying and what it cost me. So it's not that easy, especially when the bad cops are at the top. So crime is related to poverty rates. Disagree. Disagree 100%. I grew up very poor. My family was very poor. My family were migrant farm workers here in California. I disagree. I disagree. Nobody in my family was a criminal. Now we did have a, a, a cousin here or there, but no, I don't. I don't buy that at any bit. It'd be like saying all poor people are bad people. No. So, does poverty cause some crime? Absolutely, it does. But I disagree. Uh, booby traps are illegal in all states. I don't. I don't, well, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I don't know who has the right to come into your house and say you can't have a booby trap. But I think we're getting kind of crazy now because if you have booby traps, you probably have other mental issues too. Um, do you think this is the beginning of the end about California? Good question. I don't know. I don't know. Um, do you think cops should be able to turn off, turn off mute their body cams at will? I've heard stories of corrupt cops doing bad things, not getting caught because they turned off their body cams. No, I, I think what your body cam's on, it's on. The only time you should be able to mute your body cam is when you're going to talk tactics to like do something. Um, but no, beyond that, but a lot of departments now have policies. Here's the thing is boom is that we hear stories, but where, where are these stories at? Because out here in, in Southern California or in California, I, I believe we all have policies, all of like these 640 police agencies, we all have policies that say you can't turn off your body cam. So we've already taken care of that problem here in California. And if you violate that policy, you're going to suffer the ramifications of violating those policies. So, um, but where is that happening at? That's the thing is that then we need to fix it there. Um, let's see here. Hey guys, we're going to start wrapping this up. I do appreciate everybody was here. Please like before you leave. I definitely do appreciate the 29 likes. Um, I'm going to finish up here, these last couple of questions, and then I got to get going. Uh, let's see here. Um, everything was better back in the days. Like TK Kirkland said, social media has destroyed the world. Eh, to a degree, to a degree. Um, uh, I'm 19 going to finish my bachelor's in criminal justice in a few months playing. Oh, okay, cool. That's hey. That's pretty good. They're random. Random, if you want to talk offline on uh, Discord, send me some stuff. I do have some tips on how to become a firefighter. Johnny Horton, Johnny Cash, and Marty Robbins. I love it, Kaden. What is your opinion of Back to Blue? Well, definitely Back to Blue. I Back to Blue, and I think we should all Back to Blue. Blue lives matter. And I, if you guys want to follow me on social media, on my personal social media, I put down, you know, um, Thin Blue Line, um, Blue Lives Matter. I don't care what people think about that, but... I definitely am a staunch supporter of my brothers and sisters in law enforcement. Police are to be the peacekeepers, not warriors. Uh, if you want combat, then go to the military. I, we don't want combat, LG. That's the problem. We don't want combat, but combat comes to us, and then we have to do something about it. So we are peacekeepers, but to maintain peace, violence has to be a part of that. 
There's just no way around it. I think, if you recall, one of the best sayings, and I'm going to throw that one out. I can't believe I'm even doing this. And I, I think you need to really look at what police do because, um, let me see here. And uh, let me see here. I'm trying to. Uh, sorry. Okay. I'm sorry, it wasn't Hemingway. It was George Orwell. People sleep peacefully in beds at night only because rough men stand ready to do violence on their behalf. That is George or or Orwell, the writer of 1984 and many other books that many of us had to read growing up in the 80s. Um, I think it's a pretty profound statement. Yes, people sleep peacefully in their beds at night because rough men are ready to to do violence on those who would harm other people. So I, I, I love that quote. I've always loved that quote. I know it's not politically correct, but I'm not here to be politically correct. This is definitely the wrong channel for that. So um, once again, remember, if you are a bad person and you're doing something wrong and you get caught, give up. Put your hands up. Comply. Pardon me. Comply with the police officers. But when you decide that you want to run or fight, then obviously we have to do something. So I, des I definitely disagree with that, LG Gaming. Um, we react to the actions of the suspects. Let's see. Stop, stop woke, stop woke. And yeah, I, I agree with you, Tordai. Um, oh my gosh, that completely jumped up, guys. So let me take a quick look here. Um, maybe the crime is out of control because of poverty and all the hot. Disagree. Disagree. I grew up in a very poor community. Very poor. Not only was my family poor, but we grew up in a very poor community. So, there is some data that ties the two together, but you take that you you go into an impoverished neighborhood and you tell people what you're saying here, they're going to disagree with you. They're gonna you know, they're gonna burn you at the stake trying to say that they're they're you know that crime is tied to being impoverished because impoverished people um, take pride in you know getting through the world and and making it so. Um, they would have a tough time with those comments, and they don't like those comments. When I was poor, I didn't like those comments. Poverty isn't the sole reason for crime. I've seen clips of people who seem like they're doing well. Yeah, I, I agree. One day we should do a 12-hour stream. Ooh, that would be tough. Fitness topic. Have a primary alternative convenience emergency for your career. ACU1, PT test, psychological screening, academic, and Stu Smith, random user, .8, go live, live, live life. Oh, okay. All right. I, that, fitness that was pretty well pretty well summarized uh how many police officers are in the u.s in 22 there were 700 in full-time law enforcement in the united states an increase from yeah and there's almost a million now okay now should an officer go to law school to know they should go to some type of law school not like lawyer school but a law school something we should probably spend a while on constitutional policing but that's not going to happen uh you know, the answer is that police need to police their city. I agree with you 100% question, but here it is. I worked in the city I grew up in that my family has called home for 100 years. I was hoping to become the chief of police of that city, which what better thing? You had a small town boy who came back and worked as an EMT, paramedic, and firefighter in the city he grew up in, in the city that his family has called home for 100 years, finally goes to all the right schools, gets all the right certifications and licenses, and does everything he's supposed to do to be told that he cannot be the chief of police because he stood up to some bullies and is subsequently the chief that comes into place uh, is not from the community. Okay, does that make any sense to you? So I agree with you. I mean, what better person to – now, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but what better person to understand the community that his parents still live in, that his family still lives in, knows the schools, 
that be able to say, like, I, I know what it's like to grow up here, and I know what I know what these people need from their police officers. But that didn't happen. So wh- who who do we hold accountable for decisions like that? Um, hey, Chris, what's up, Brady? What's going on? I'd have to actually take a look at well, and, oh, let me so let me let me jump back to some stuff about statistics. Being a researcher, anybody could skew statistics to be what you want them to be. So, I, I I'm seeing what some people are saying about the crime rate and stuff like that. I still find it very hard to believe that if you're poor, you are going to be you're more susceptible to committing crimes. I just, I definitely have a problem with that because I personally have worked, like I said, I, I, I grew up impoverished. I lived in an impoverished neighborhood. I policed an impoverished neighborhood. And to me, these were the best people in the world. So. Okay. I'm trying to catch up guys. I'm not going to be able to catch up. So, um, Yeah, I'm not gonna be able to catch up, unfortunately, because um, it's already 10, 11. I've already gone a few minutes past my my one hour mark that I was gonna do for myself. Um. So yeah, but you know, we were. But to, to end on a positive note, ladies and gentlemen, no matter where you live, and no matter where you live, there's gonna be some sort of problems, you know. Um. I live in a very safe city. I pol- I used to police in a very. I used to police in a city that was, uh, I don't want to say crime ridden, but had high crime. I don't chalk that up to the people being impoverished. I just chalk it up to bad people, that are taking advantage of good people, because. You, 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 yeah, it's just like, it's just bad people. It's just, they're, they're, they're just bad people. They're bad people who want to take shortcuts. There's bad people who, you know, they have no problem victimizing other people. And it's, it's just sad because, um, you know, to see someone come home from work and they walk into their house and it's been burglarized, uh, is awful, you know, because then you sit there and you're like, you know, you feel like, you know, like you've let them down because you weren't around to stop this crime. That's the other part about being a police officer is looking into the faces of your victims and them looking at you like, where were you? How come you couldn't stop this? And, you know, policing in the United States is all reactive. There is no proactiveness because we just don't have enough cops. So that's part of the problem as well. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully, you know, unfortunately right now, especially in the United States, we have a problem with each other. We are, you know, Americans have turned against one another you you are you're you're told that you have to choose a side you have to be red or you have to be blue um no one respects anyone's opinion anymore uh you know if you have an opinion that's contrary to someone else's you're whatever you're you know either you're called a racist or you're called a wokeness whatever that may be um you know the country is definitely divided and you know and and then you know you you have you know i i i you we just have this this we're we're doing things to appease other people like emptying out our prisons and emptying out our jails and we're not taking a look at what ramifications that's having on our communities then let's let's not even talk about i mean we can now jump on the, the you know the world stage i mean we we have war fronts you know we have russia ukraine going on we now have uh israel palestine going palestine going on you know, there's a you know there's talk here in the United States about what China is going to possibly do to Taiwan in the future. Then we hear that Iran's going to they're planning an attack on Israel any any minute. It's just like, and then we have you know the cartels in Mexico. It's just like the world stage. It's funny. I, I've said this before in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan was the president. He started to build up the nuclear arsenal. 
And if you look at the movies in the 80s, it's a tall tale sign of what we felt in the United States from Threads, The Day After, Terminator, all these movies about nuclear holocaust. And I remember growing up, I was afraid that we were going to blow ourselves up. I mean, it really just felt like we were going to blow ourselves up. And this was in the 80s, in the late 80s. I remember thinking to myself, what would the world look like after a nuclear holocaust? And we survived it, obviously. You know, the wall came down and, you know, Russia became, uh, you know, from the USSR, then, you know, came, you know, the Russia. I have never felt more like we're going to blow ourselves up than today. It's like amazing that we actually, I feel like we can definitely do it today more so than we could do it in the 80s. So that's just kind of like, and I've said that many, many times before. So, uh, all right. I was trying to end on a positive note. <laughs> I'm ending on nuclear war. It's <laughs> not so positive anymore, right? All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I had some fun this morning with you guys. We had uh, 30 likes. Uh, we have. Uh, it's been great. I definitely appreciate all of you guys here. We will be doing again. We will be doing this again in two weeks. We got pretty deep this time. Uh, which was good, which was good. It's always good to talk. It's always good to have debate. It's always good to respect each other's opinions. Um, that's why I'm here to talk about my opinion. That's all it is, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying I'm wrong. I'm just giving you the world according to Chris the Cop. That's all. You can definitely disagree with anything that I said, and I will utterly respect that. But I will defend my opinion. I definitely will. So just know that. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's based upon, you know, being a police officer for 28 years, being in public safety for 40 years. I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of bad. So anyways, thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me on this live stream of coffee with the cop. Um, I'm actually about to finish my, my swig of coffee and then I'm going to go shower up and head on over to my shop. So once again, if you guys are looking for any type of gaming supplies, hit us up over at gameologyshop.com. I think it is. I can't recall, but look for gameology with an E and, um, I'm going to be there for the rest of the day, but, uh, thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, and I will see you guys next week for tactical Tuesday. Our live streaming where we're going to co-op Thursday. I think we're going to be doing some uh, PvP action. I'm not quite sure yet. Fox uh, hasn't told me what we're going to do yet. And then um, that'll be it. We got a special treat coming. I'll let you guys know this today. Last night, I bought and played The Division. And I recorded my first 40 minutes the first three missions that you get along with the tutorial i've uploaded that and i'm going to be talking about fox to release that later on this evening so you can watch chris the cop playing the division something new i actually really enjoyed the game so because you were here you got to hear it first all right ladies and gentlemen take care of yourself take care of one another we can make the world a better place and god gosh dang it we got to try right we got to definitely try to make the world a better place we can make the world a better place just in our own little space with a simple smile, a nice comment, or just a nice gesture. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is Krista Copp reminding all of you, peace and take care.